don't be fooled by the cup of tea. It's like 5 p.m. right now. Oh, I am the queen of procrastination. Hi friends. As much as I love filming, I apparently just love procrastinating even more. So I was like, today I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get up early, and I'm gonna do all my things, I'm gonna do some yoga. I'm gonna be productive today because it's my last day off before things get a little crazy for me. Of course I sleep until 1.30 p.m. and don't get around to filming till 5 p.m. because bad habits are hard to break but I am here, we're here together, and we're gonna film a full face of makeup, and it's gonna be pretty chatty. So grab a cup of tea, grab some makeup, come find me, let's get ready together. I don't know how much I'm going to talk through what I'm doing on my face just because I feel like it's gonna be pretty basic, so. And it's nothing new. If I wanna talk about it, I will, but if I don't, I won't. Everything will be listed in the description box down below as always, so no worries about missing out. Uh, I thought since we just wrapped up that series and because it's the start of the most beautiful time of the year, which is fall, don't get it twisted, I thought I should just jump on here, do something chatty update you on what's going on in my life. It's never really that exciting. It's not like I have a really exciting life. I just know some of you are interested. You know, I feel like I should always touch base with, you know, people who watch my videos and just make sure everyone's doing well. We're all good. And if not, that we're doing our best to survive. <laughs> So it's always nice to just check in with you folks. But yes, we just wrapped up the series, Get the Most Out of Your Palette with the Alyssa Edwards palette. Is that the first time I've done four videos for one palette? Because usually I only get to about two or three before I run out of time or lose interest or find something more pressing to film about. But with this one, I just kept going because I felt like there was more to discover out of it than just one or two looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Really proud of it, actually. Um, I haven't figured out what palette to do next. I will probably probably wait until maybe something new comes around. I get more views the more relevant the palette is, clearly. <laughs> that's not rocket science. I don't know if I want to go back and revisit something that's ages old now. I don't know. What do you think? I want to know your thoughts actually on that one. I do have cult classic palettes that are still being produced now. Like I have the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. That's a behemoth. That could take a while. If anyone is still interested in a series on the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, just let me know. Otherwise, I think I might just skip it and move on to something new. But if there's anything pressing that people really want reviewed, I would love to know. A makeup channel can be so many things other than just staying up to date on the newest launches. And I feel like there is room and space on YouTube for that kind of content. So, so I'm not super fussed about that. But I am going to film something that I've never filmed before after this, which is a product empties video. I think I'll release that first before this one. So I will link it up here if you haven't seen it yet. And I haven't filmed it yet, but I hope it's going to be interesting. And I was going to wait until December to do this, but I I mean, why not now? I don't know, I just felt like it would be an easy video to do. And also I could get a second video out of it by just putting on my makeup for said video. I'm just gonna quickly speed through this so I can save some talking points for more interesting moments in my makeup application. I really want to try a new cream contour soon. I feel like I like the milk one, but I want to try something new. I don't know if it gives me the same amount of impact that I really want out of a cream contour since I'm using it underneath as opposed to over top but I would love to try something with a bit more potency. Like this matte bronzer stick is great for when you are putting it on bare skin and not putting foundation on top of it. It melts really naturally into the skin. It looks just like your skin. It's a really great product for that, but I really want to get more into contouring and highlighting with cream. I don't know. It's fun. Update on this Flower Beauty concealer. It's phenomenal, just so you're aware. I've been using it pretty consistently in my routine and I have to say I really, really love it. I've been using the Flower Beauty sponge and it's not my fave. It blends really nicely, but the size of it is just so unwieldy that you actually can't get it under your eyes. So I always feel like I have to go back in with my beauty blender just to blend out the under eye area. With this size of thing, you can't really get, can't really fit it under your eye without getting product fucking everywhere. Which is too bad because it's a really nice sponge. I love the texture of it and it blends beautifully. Maybe it's just because I have a really small face, which is true. I guess last time we talked, what was I hopeful about that got dashed very soon after filming that? Oh right, moving. Um, so let me just wait for my upstairs neighbors to stop herding elephants up there. So no, we ended up not 
getting accepted into the place we wanted, despite being friends with someone who's currently already living in the building and being told that we would be a priority because of that. Never heard back from them. I ended up trying to keep in contact with the manager of the property saying we're still interested. They kind of just responded kind of curtly with a, oh, we decided to not rent it out for the month of August. We decided to wait until we renovated it once the tenants had left and I was like great awesome we're still interested like even if it takes longer we're still interested in renting it after it's been renovated and he just says okay thanks and I never hear back from him I'm still a little bit choked that we never got that place I went and saw it and it was it was cute and plus it had two bedrooms and one was perfect for a studio so we decided not to move so I had to stay here until we get kicked out. And we have no idea when that's happening, mind you. We don't know when we're getting renovated. We just know it is happening. They just haven't given us a definite date yet because getting a place rezoned, I guess, takes a lot of, well, it takes a lot of time. We're kind of still waiting on the final word. They just kind of gave us a year which is a little frustrating because you can't really plan around that. You just kind of have to wait and then just be ready. And whatever is, you know, available at the time that you are being pushed out of your home, you kind of have to take it, which is not ideal. It's not the way I wanted things to happen. This place really sucks the energy out of me and I know that's irrational and maybe I'm just too materialistic or I care too much about nice things. I've tried to insert more of my own self into this place by putting in furniture that I already owned, figuring out the lighting just right, really trying to put my own personal stamp on this place, but no matter how much work I put into it, I just don't, I don't care about this space. It's dank, it is damp, it is mildewy. It's not that it's just old. It's seriously a place that I don't think anyone should really be truly living. It's a hole. It's very, it's very seriously one. I'm not just being over dramatic. If you came here and saw this place, you'd understand. Plus there's no privacy. I can constantly hear my neighbors upstairs doing God knows what. They need to stop taking their aggression out on their furniture, I swear to God. The walls are paper thin. Plus we're the basement suite, which means that we're just right at the level where everyone can see in, everyone can walk right by. It's just, there's no privacy. I'm constantly having to listen to people right outside my window who are just you know walking in from you know a night out and having a chat and this happened last night it was 2 a.m even later and i was just on the couch and i just hear a slew of people coming up the side walkway just chatting at a regular decibel level that you would you know like i am now and they just had no regard for the fact that we live right here you know and it just makes me feel a little bit unprotected elephants i swear to god i swear to god i don't know how many th heavy things a day they need to drop before they realize that maybe they have a problem maybe they should be a bit more careful with their objects I desperately do my best to give you guys the best experience I can with what I have. A lot of it is completely out of my control and that makes me feel crazy. I know that like it doesn't affect Andrew at all. He couldn't care less where he lives. He doesn't need to nest. He doesn't need to make himself a home. And while I totally respect that, it does make me feel insanely guilty for feeling so claustrophobic here. I feel guilty, you know, I feel guilty for wanting a nicer place. It makes me feel materialistic and no one wants to feel that way. But I'm a person who needs a home base. I'm a person who needs a nest. I'm a nester and I don't feel truly comfortable or at peace until I have that in my life. And let me tell you, it's just, it's been a long time since I've actually felt that. The last place that I truly could call my own that had my name on the lease, that I filled with my own furniture that I decorated myself. That was the summer of 2015. I mean, to get to the point, I haven't had my own home in three years. And that was also the last time that I seriously just felt in control of my own life. It affects you. Having your own place affects your, your sense of self, your sense of independence, your, your sense of self-sufficiency. And I've had none of that for three years. And it's starting to get to me like really get to me. And I feel like it's the crux of a lot of my mental unwellness is kind of feeling this underlying guilt kind of constantly for the fact that, I mean, and this is really truth o'clock, this might be too much information, but like I've gone from one living situation with another human being immediately into another similar living situation with another human being. And there was no time in between that to stand on my own two feet. And it makes you feel ashamed, you know? I feel a lot of shame. And I think that's finally starting to get to me. And I had this crazy idea and I don't know if 
anyone has ever done it in this order before, but I kind of feel like I want to move out, which a lot of people I've talked to kind of go, huh? <laughs> you know, maybe it's too weird. Maybe it wouldn't work. Maybe it would just be too out there, but I really just want to have my own space. Again, I miss it. That's not to say I don't want to be with who I'm with. I, I don't have autonomy over my own life right now. This is not my cry for help. Andrew is a wonderful human being. I'm not saying that Andrew is trapping me here against my will. That's not what this is about. If we're getting really real, he basically just decided to help me in a time where I needed help the most. And he's just allowed me to be in his space for three years out of the goodness of his own heart. And I am nothing but grateful. However, I just turned 30 this year and I don't know if it's my expectations of how my life should be going because of certain preconceived notions about society and about being 30. I don't know. Or if it's because I truly in my heart need to figure out how to just be myself away from everyone else. But, but maybe I just need to move out. Maybe I just need to find a place for myself and figure out some stuff on my own. The more I think about it, the less crazy it seems. And I know it'd be such a huge leap and I can't really afford it right now but I think I would learn a lot about myself and I don't think I can be on a path of self-discovery without some solitude. We've been living on top of each other for so long that I feel like I can't truly express who I am or even discover who I am as a human being when someone else is there and I know that the person who's there is totally non-judgmental and does not give a shit about anything I do on this planet as long as I'm safe and I'm happy. It just means that I am putting someone out and no matter how much they say it doesn't matter, it matters to me. I only film when he's not here because I feel so, so self-conscious that I, I truly can't just express myself fully and honestly when there's another person in the room or in the other room. Even if they have headphones on, I, I just can't. And I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I honestly don't know how YouTubers do it with other people in their houses. Maybe their houses are bigger than mine. They probably are. Some big YouTubers just let their friends watch them while they film. I don't think I could ever do that. Sometimes I'm even worried if people upstairs can hear me or people outside or if people are looking through this window. Like I'm so self-conscious. And when we didn't get that place with two bedrooms, I was really sad because if we just move into another one bedroom together, we're still in the same situation. We're still living on top of each other. I still don't have my own private space to do my work. So anyway, that's how I really feel. I don't know. Do you think it would work? Do you think a relationship would work even if you lived in two separate locations after you lived together for three years? I don't know. Comment down below. I want to know if you've ever been in this situation or if you think I'm crazy or if you think it would work. That's kind of the crux of everything that's going on in my life right now. I feel like everything's stemming from this one decision I have to make and let the other pieces fall where they may. In January, Andrew and I are slated to go to Florida to visit Disney World and Universal Studios. And then we're supposed to go to New Orleans for a week. My birthday present this year from him was a trip, which is really, 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 really generous of him. I mean, it's not just for me. I know that when he turned 30, he really wanted to go on a trip and he never got to because he seriously just works nonstop. We have this small window of opportunity where we could possibly just leave the country and go do something for a couple weeks. So we decided before we get too old, we wanna go visit a Disney theme park. I've never been to one. That's right, never been to a Disney theme park. Ever since I was a very small kid, I've always wanted to go to a Disney theme park. I mean, I always asked my folks if I could go to Disneyland and I was met with a lot of laughter. You can kind of get a sense of what my childhood was like. And I don't begrudge them for that. I don't, I don't hold a grudge against my my father for never letting us go on vacation. No, seriously, I'm fine. Regardless, Never been to Disneyland, never been to Disney World, never been to Disney anything. And I need to do that before I die. We're gonna go to Disney World. Four days in Disney World and then three days in Universal Studios. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm scared because there just seems to be so many rules and so many little things that people tell you you have to do in order to enjoy your time at Disney World. There's apps, there's line skipping, there's passes, there's just so many elements that are so foreign to me and it kind of makes me really nervous that I'm gonna screw it up and not get the best experience that I can. But I feel a little stressed out about it, but I'm certain that we'll have an amazing time. It's amazing how many of your friends are Disney experts. You never really realize that until you, until you ask for advice on Facebook and literally everyone comes out of the woodwork. It was kind of phenomenal actually. I've never had such a response on any of my posts on Facebook ever, I think in the history of my entire life. So you want people to respond to your stuff? Ask a question about Disney. I think what we're actually more 
excited about is going to New Orleans for a week. All I want to do is like listen to jazz music, eat beignets, have delicious food, and see some graveyards. So if any of you have been to New Orleans and have secret special places that we should go, definitely comment down below. Also, I'm planning on getting a tattoo there. I'm already following the New Orleans tattoo tag on Instagram just to like source out potentially who I would want to book in with. I'm also debating on just doing a walk-in, but I kind of want something specific, but I really, really, when I'm there, I no bones about it, want to get a tattoo. When else am I going to be able to get a tattoo in New Orleans? Probably never. God, it gets so dusty in here when I have the fucking windows closed. I'd open the windows, but you'd hear all of my neighbors, so. Okay, it looks like I have my base kind of sorted. Let me speed through these brows because I can't talk and do brows at the same time. Can anyone? I don't think so. Let's dust off this bag. It has been here a long enough. I guess the last thing I was talking about with you guys was also the shows that I was auditioning for. I don't know, it was like five auditions in the span of like two weeks, which is kind of insane if you're in Vancouver. I remember just thinking like, God, one of these has got to work out. <laughs> it wasn't the one that I thought would work out, but I did actually end up booking one of them. But first up, I'm doing a show with my friend. You always think you'll have time to get really super prepared and do all your homework and show up on the first day, basically off book, it never happens. So so we're doing a production of Company, which is a little musical by Stephen Sondheim, for those of you who know Stephen Sondheim. If not, definitely go check him out. I mean, I'm sure you've heard his stuff without knowing. Anyways, we're doing one of my all-time favorite Sondheim shows, and I'm very excited about it. And it's kind of the first Sondheim show ever that I'm doing in my life, and that's a little bit, it's a little bit intimidating. I hate this brush. I don't know why I use it all the time. It's the M441. It's janky. The M514. It's definitely where it's at. Oh, of course, someone decides to start mowing their lawn. Honestly, I'm about to lose it on this whole neighborhood. <laughs> All right, let's just do a little bit of eyeshadow while we wait for someone to stop mowing their lawn. So other thing I didn't get to do that I was telling you about was PAX. We ended up being extremely short staffed for most of August and the beginning of September. So I'm stuck here while my friends get to gallivant off to Seattle. That's okay, I couldn't really afford to go to PAX anyway. But if anyone did go this year to PAX West, tell me your favorite moment. If you got to play any cool games, meet any awesome people. the lawnmower again. My energy is starting to dip because it's getting really warm in here. But if I opened a window, it does smell like freshly cut grass out there. It's not unpleasant. So there was one show in particular that I was really hoping I would get because it meant a lot to me. I ended up um, not booking that one. But then actually just a few days ago, I found out that I had booked another one. I had auditioned for both these shows pretty much at the exact same time, which was about two months ago. So I definitely was not expecting to hear back. I definitely thought that I was no longer in the running, which means that I am pretty much book solid until the new year, which is a relief <laughs> to say the least. It means I might not have as much time for you guys over the course of the fall winter. I'm gonna do my best because honestly, fall winter is my favorite time to create content around, especially Halloween. Don't worry, I will still give you some spooky, spoopy content for you. I just don't know what yet. I have absolutely no idea what I want to do yet. But it's gonna be spooky! Anyway, let me know what you want to see. That looks appropriately autumnal. Great. But I really wanted to incorporate Top Yacht today because it's just so freaking beautiful. So we're gonna go in with that. I just kind of wanted a classic fall glam today. And I know that this will deliver. 
Honestly, get ready with me are just another good excuse to do really basic eyeshadow looks and I'm not ashamed. Even as a person who just buys makeup, I have so much stuff that I don't know if I'll ever get through. And yet, I always feel like I need more. I'm gonna throw a tiny bit of Gemini on top in the space between. Should I do liner or should I be lazy? I'm really not into it right now. I'm just gonna put some dark brown eyeshadow on the lash line just to hide the lash band. I feel like this is a very totty eyeshadow look. Like I've definitely seen her do this look before. Okay, let's smoke out that lower lash line. I gotta open the window, it's so hot. Who else out here um, hit 30 and started crying every time they saw a small child? Cause that sure happened to me. Instantly the moment I hit 30, I see a toddler, I see a tiny baby, and my eyes just start to well up with tears. It's the weirdest involuntary response I've ever experienced. I've never felt any sort of pull towards motherhood ever. And suddenly my whole body is like setting off alarms. Anyway, so the human body is fucked. <laughs> I'm gonna finish off the eye with something I've actually never used and I picked up ages ago. It's the Pixi Liquid Fairy Lights in the color Sunray. And I just kind of want to pop it onto the inner corner on the lower lash line. I don't want to get too, too intense today, but I just figured a little bit of glitter never hurt anyone. I have so many glittery things and I never fucking use them. Like look at all these like magnificent metals that like I never ever use on camera. And you always buy them thinking like, oh, I'm gonna use that all the flipping time and they never do. Okay, let's do a couple of preliminary freckles. I've been doing this lately as a step underneath my bronzer and blush, just with a little bit of eyeshadow. And then I go in at the very end after I've set with a spray, then I go in with the freck on top and it gives it a really layered look, I like to think. I think it just gives my freckles more depth and makes them look more realistic. Now let's go on top of the nose, soften everything and make it look very sun-kissed. Since there are so many foundation launches happening this season, I really wanted to ask you guys, what foundation did you want me to review the most? Now, as you know, I like a good glowy foundation and Fenty just launched one. So I'm kind of eyeing that one up, but also Milk just came out with a new foundation stick. Anastasia Beverly Hills came out with a new foundation. It's not that I don't love Flower Beauty and it's, it's not that it's not the most perfect foundation in the whole entire planet, cause it is, but I really am just kind of craving something new in my routine. Maybe something that's not, you know, identical in formula, but something that'll give me a different, different feeling. Whew, let's just like power through now. We're in the home stretch. Right, it's Sunday. So the hall across the street has an opera group. I am seriously about to lose my cool. just given up on the sound at this point. Let's spray. All right, let me just gather myself, pop on some lashes and some mascara, get cooled off, and we will come back and finish the rest of the look. Nearly there, these are Bat Wings by Likely Makeup. Even though they are kind of on the dramatic side, they are my most comfortable lash. They're so light, I barely feel them on my face. It's kind of weird. Okay, we're going to finish this face pronto. Let's do a lip. this is the right look. It's a bit too cool toned for this really yellowy warm eye. Yeah, that's good. And then I think actually this will go really well. It's the um, So Juicy Plumping Gloss in NASA, which I tried on a different video. I guess the last thing I want to do is apply just, you know, just one or two more freckles. More is more. I 
I believe that is everything, folks. Wow, this video has been a little bit of a journey. But I really like how this look turned out. I think it's perfect for getting into the fall spirit. I am so ready for the temperature to drop. I <laughs> cannot wait. I hope this video was entertaining in any sort of way for you. I never know how people are gonna feel when I just get on the camera and start chatting away. It's just always kind of a crapshoot how the conversation or the one-sided conversation is gonna turn out because as you keep talking and monologuing, things kind of float to the surface and sometimes that kind of stuff isn't revealed until, until it's flying out of your mouth. You can't get it back. So <laughs> I don't know how much of that I'm gonna leave in, but I hope that you got something out of it. Anyway, I actually need to film another video. So I'm going to sign off and, and hope that you guys have a wonderful day or a night or evening, wherever you are. I hope that it's going okay. So let's rattle off the spiel. Here are a few things you can do to help out this channel. One, you could like this video. Two, you could comment down below on what you think should happen next on this channel, on what you think I should do for Halloween, on how you're doing in general, on any of the thoughts that I put forward. I just wanna know what you think. Three, you could, you could subscribe, you could always do that. Please subscribe, tell a friend. Four, you could follow me on other social media. My Instagram is at Madelaide, the same way it is spelled here, and my Twitter, I almost said Tumblr, and my Twitter is at Madsuds, which is M-A-D-D-S-U-D-Z. And five, if you want to, you can click the Patreon link down below and find out how you can become more of a partner in this channel and its development. All right, folks. Please be kind and be generous to everyone you meet out there in the world today, including your noisy upstairs neighbors. And hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.